Okay. Uh, now we are going to start the, the modeling of uh, the mechanical system. So we're going to do translational mechanical system. So we have rotational and translational. So translational, so it, it, it means that the, the system is doing only uh, the, the translational movements. So, so this is uh, what we are going to do here. And um, as we we you know already we we have done with you the modeling of the electrical system so you 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 are now able to to write a transfer function so you can relate the output of a mechanical system, electrical system to to its input um, using Laplace transform so you can, you are able to to get the LTE differential equation. Of electrical system, then you can you can relate its output to its uh, input. So this is already known by you. So now what we are going to do, we are going now to see the mechanical system. And um, um, as you can see, for the electrical system, we use three components, which we said they were passive components, so there were no no internal source of energy within the component. So we are basically going to do the same thing with mechanical system, but the mechanical system will also use um, three components. Remember in, um, uh, in mechanical, we're saying that we, in electrical, we're using uh, the uh, component that could store energy and component that could dissipate energy, like the resistor. The resistor can the resistor can dissipate uh, energy, but uh, capacitor and uh, inductor can um, store store the energy. So this is what we are going to do now. Um, we are going to talk about three components, which we're gonna call the spring the mass and the viscous damper or that dash spot. Um, I know you know already the spring, you know already the mass, and the viscous damper is uh, like the dash spot. You know, uh, like, how can I explain it? You know, like, like when you are driving a car, when you are driving a car, uh, this, the, the, I, can, I can plus the, the, the dash spot on the wheel. That's, that is going to help you to, to, to reduce the the shock even when you are you, 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 you are driving so yeah this the same the same thing that we had in the electrical system the yeah the the mechanical system or I can say the electrical system they had their their own uh, coefficient would we'll also see different coefficients here. So let's move now and see what what is this here. Okay, remember we had a table where we were able to to to, to give a relationship between current and uh, voltage of a different component and the uh, voltage and charge of different components. So in mechanical system, what you're going to have, it could be the relationship between uh, force and displacement and relationship uh, between the charge, uh, uh, between the displacement, between the force and the velocity. So this is what we're going to now do today. You can see this table. Let me try to, to zoom it. Yeah. Mm. You can see here we have the electrical components, and on the other side, yeah, on the other side we have the mechanical component. So what we are having here is um, we have the capacitor, the resistor, and the inductor. And on the other side, we have the spring, the viscous damper, and uh, the mass. So 
So already you can see we have the capacitor and we have also the relationship between the force and the velocity for the spring. We have also the relationship between the force and the velocity for the viscous damper and also the force and the velocity for the mass. You can see we have also the relationship for force displacement and also the impedance. I, I think you can remember the, the, the impedance rule that we use in electrical uh, systems. So this can, can also be applied in mechanical, mechanical system. So as you say here, so that you can see that the spring is, um, is not like it's the equivalence, but it's there is some analogy between the capacitor, the viscous damper. I can see the spring is an is a analogy to the capacitor, the viscous damper is an analogy to the resistor, and the mass is an analogy to the, the inductor. You can see it's uh, there is there is some analogy between uh, these different uh, components. These different components. So now um, first we are using certain physical law, like heat of flow that we use in electrical system. So here in mechanical system, we'll be using another law. Uh, uh, remember, I told you that the, the, um, there is a certain law in mechanical. So here we are going to use what we call the Newton's law. So this is going to be basically what we're going to use to to be able to create our our own our own model. So the 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 Newton's law, I think you know already. It is just say. Uh, the sum of uh, all external force that are applied to a system is equal to, uh, to its mass times its acceleration. So we have the, the mass of uh, the system, all the force that are applied to, to that mass, uh, the sum of all the forces is equal to the mass times acceleration. So we have different force that can be applied to a system. So that force will be equal to the mass times its acceleration. So this is basically the law that we are going to use here in um, control system. So now, um, this is how it can be written mass times acceleration. Then there is something that is very important to notice now. It, the direction of the force. Remember also in the uh, electrical system, we had the, the current. Uh, we had to choose the direction of the current, how the current is going to flow, and uh, that could determine the sign of our voltage. So here also we have different direction uh, due to, to the motion, so the direction of uh, the, the, the movement. And if they are going in the same direction at the displacement, so this is going to be positive. And uh, if they are going in oppo opposite direction of the movement, so uh, that will be negative. So the, the, the direction of the force and the, the, the direction of the movement will determine the sign of uh, our force. So this is, uh, is, is, is basically, well, when we were using a mechanical system, in, in most cases, the sign of the damper, uh, and you can say if, even normally, the sign of the damper and uh, the force of the damper or the force of uh, the spring are always negative. So put this, this one in mind that the, the force of the, the uh, are always act in a negative, uh, negative direction to the motion. Um, so you, you you can even see by yourself. So you know you know what is the the the, the spring like when you take the spring. Every time you want to use it, we put it in such a way that it's gonna be trying to to do the the opposite uh, uh, to act in you know opposite move movement of, of, of the direction. So this is basically. How, how it works. So let me try to um, 
to show you this example. Let me try if my my this one is going to work now. Oh, wait, but okay. Uh, you can see this example. We have the mass. Uh, Mm, you can see this is the mass, and we have different forces applied to this uh, to this mass. But you can see on top we have x of t. This is the, the displacement, so this is giving us the the direction of um, the motion. So this gives the direction of the motion. This, this is what you you, you can see here. Yeah? So this direction is always taken as a positive direction. So every arrow of the force following this direction will be considered as a, a positive force because it's going in the same direction with, 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 with the, the motion. Um, and this, this type of representation is called the free body diagram. So the free body diagram, this, this is how we represent this one is the free body diagram so you understand better when we'll be on the first example or when we'll be doing the exercises you understand what is really the, the free body uh, diagram so as you can see here uh, we have this free body diagram and we have the 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 background the background noise, eh? Hmm. So, hmm. Okay, give me just a minute. I, I, I'll sort it, this out. Yeah, okay, let's move now. I think I, I, I think that now you want to hear again the, the background noise. Eh? So it's okay. I've sorted out that problem. Okay, so we we are having this now, this free body diagram. Uh and from now, let me just try to, to, to get another example here because this one you can see already the force and they, get, they, they have given already the equations. So let's go to this whiteboard. I don't know what is happening. What, what is this? Okay. Okay. So we can delete this one. Let's let now use this. Oh, this thing started acting funny now. Okay, the time the whiteboard is coming on. Okay, it's so on now. And uh, we have this one here. Can also delete it. So, okay, good. So let's now go. Here uh, we can now try to do something here. So we have this is a oh, 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 oh. okay. This is a free body diagram. Let's say we have something like this. Okay. So we have this is a, a arrow. This is another arrow. This is the arrow so here. This is another arrow. You can say F. 
this is our direction x this is x of t okay and this one also can look at this one here you can just take it in as is as it is okay okay you can call this one f1 f2 three call it f4 okay so we have this free body diagram and this is the mass of our system so the free body diagram in simple way is just a representation of different force acting on a system you represent the mass of the system and different forces that are acting on that particular particular system so uh, as it said that by the newton's law they say the sum of all the forces acting on uh, a system of the external force they are equal to the mass of that system times its acceleration so that we want now to find is this one so we want to find now uh, the newton to write the newton's law of this um, of this this system here so we want to find the the like uh, the mathematical model so the the equation of this this uh, this system so let's write then say okay we have f1 okay sorry guys what is the direction of f1 is it positive or negative positive okay positive yeah and the direction of of f2 positive 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 folks so it's gonna be plus f2 and plus and three is positive mm -hmm. or negative negative it's gonna be negative yeah. Plus minus F, then plus what? F4? Negative. Negative, right? Okay. So we'll have F4 there. Okay. And this is going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration. So if you want to write it in simple way, I put it like this just to show you. Uh, how we can find it is so we can do F1 plus F2 plus oh sorry so this is gonna be now instead of plus it's gonna be uh, let's say minus minus F3 minus F4 is equal to my um, acceleration so this is basically how you're gonna be writing your free body diagram so this is very important if you don't understand this one you will have problem to understand what is coming next remember all the forces that are acting on the spring and the viscous damper they are they are negative forces so they, they always act in, in opposite direction of uh, the the motion so this is very important to to notice and you can see that mechanical system also is, is not that difficult okay let's now move to the next slide and, and see what is there so as you say on this example now we have this f1 uh, okay let let's go and see okay guys so let now try, try to do this okay okay so guys what, what is the direction of um, f1 is positive right yeah, positive. yeah f2 negative f3 negative f4 positive, positive. F4, f5 positive and f6 positive Positive. positive okay yeah that's why you can see i think you understand this this notion of positive and negative so yeah okay 
I think what, what I told you, they say F2 and F3 are negative since they have opposite direction as the, the system motion. These are, these are mechanical forces such as developed by the spring and the viscous damper. So they are always in opposite movement. So this is uh, very important for you to notice. Okay. So let's now try to, to go back to, to, the, to, to, to our slide now. Okay, now we have a, an example given to us of a, a mechanical system. How can we solve this uh, uh, mechanical system? Mm. Mm. We have a system which is given to us where we have the spring. Oh, okay, there's something that I forgot to, to tell you here. The spring is represented by K, the viscous damper by FV, uh, FV and um, the, the mass is, is M. Okay, so uh, we can go back to, 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 to this one later. So now let's go now here. We have a, a problem which is given to us, they say, find the transfer function G of S is equal to X of S the, uh, over FS. So this this is like you find the the relationship between the, the displacement, which is the output, and the force, the input. So you find the G of S will be um, the displacement over the force um, of the mechanical system. All initial conditions are assumed to be zero. So now we have this system here where we have a mass, we have a spring, and we have uh the viscous damper and we have the force the motion direction is given given to us which is x of t so they ask us to find now the transfer function of this system uh so uh we know that the first thing we need to to do is to know the question was x of s which is the displacement and f is the force so we are in the case of Force displacement, and this is what we're gonna do. Basically, we, we, we want to, we want to use force velocity. We will only use force displacement for for our mechanical problem now. So they say we have the spring, we have the um, we have the viscous damper, and we have the the mass. So now what we have to do first of all is to be able to write our free body diagram. Okay. So we must be able to write the free body diagram of our system here. So let me just try to, to do this. Uh, okay. So the free body diagram is just to represent different forces acting on our system and the, 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 the direction of uh, the motion direction. So we have our mass. So the free body diagram, you represent the mass. Let me try to draw it here. Uh, um, we are so here, no? G of S is what? What is it? You said X of S is displacement, F of S is force, and what is G of S? Sorry? G of S. V of S. G. You said X is the displacement, F is the force, and what is yeah. G? G. G of S is, 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 is the transfer function. We, we, you know that the transfer function is represented by G of S. Wherever you see the transfer function in a general case, unless if they, they call it differently. Transfer function is G of S. That's that what I said. The transfer function G of S. Uh, remember when I introduced this one, uh, I say the input. Uh, let, let me just draw it for you quickly. I say we can represent it like this. Uh, G of S is the transfer function, and C of S is the output, and R of S is the input. This is a, represent, a general representation of the force. Unless if in a particular in a particular way, they tell you that, no, this is like B, this is like, like so this is in a general way. So even in, um, in, in a mechanical system, so what you're gonna see now is, uh, in general, in general, we like um, we know that k is the coefficient of the, of the spring. Okay, this is k. 
and uh, please switch off your microphone. FV. FV is the coefficient of the viscous damper. Viscous damper and M is the mass. So this is how you're going to represent your, your force in a mechanical system. So this, these are the coefficients. So, uh, I, but they, it can be a problem where they they, they 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 give it in the different way they specify that this is like uh, the the viscous damper is B. Like I can see in the Anastasia book, in most of cases they use B for the viscous damper. So depend, but in in most cases you can see it's FV. So now let's now see what is going to happen here. So we have our problem. Uh, let, let, let me try to to to, to draw it. Can try to draw it in different way. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Let's go here. We have our problem, which is was is given to us is in this way. Yo. Okay. The drawing is not good, eh? Okay. Okay. Go. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, I need less of that. It's finished. Hmm. Sorry for for this. This is this thing. This tool is not following my hands. So we have now there. This was damper. And we have the force acting in that direction. We have also this and that. So this is x of t, x of t, x of t, and this is a k, the spring. And there we have f v. So this is like. A, like a, okay. So this is the, the apply force. This is the apply force. So the question to us is so the question is uh they say to find the transfer function, which is given the, 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 the relationship between the forces and the displacement. So G of S, which is equal to, uh, is gonna be X of S, the displacement over F of S, the force. So before we, we solve this one, the first thing to do is to write the free body diagram. So you represent the mass. So this is the mass of the system. Then we have different force acting. How many forces do you have here? Guys, how many forces? So we have three forces. The, the force for the spring. Yeah, the force for the viscous damper and the force for uh the, the the apply force so what you're gonna have here is this one is gonna be f of x and here you're gonna have now the spring force so how can we represent the spring force let's go back to to the slide here and uh, the slide here, so these are the slides from there. OK, 
can go there and say, okay. Um, you can see when you go back here, they say for the spring force displacement, this is the, the relation, the relation of the force. So this is how you can represent your force in uh, in this case of the spring is K times uh, the, this, the X of T. And here is F, the derivative of uh, the displacement of over DT. And this is the mass D square over DT square. So now let's represent our force here. Our first force is the spring. So the spring is going to be, uh, let's say, is going to be k times x of t. Then we have the viscous damper. OK. Guys, is there anything wrong or everything is right here? Guys? Everything right. No, sorry. The direction of forces. Is yeah, that's right. good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So now let's change the direction of these two forces. So okay. So okay. This is very important. If 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 you got them wrong, everything will be wrong. So then when put this direction is is going in this way, and this one also is going in this way so the, the 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 motion is going in this way okay so uh, and this this gonna be dt okay so now we know that after we, we we have we got our three forces now we can be able to write our equation we know that they say the sum of all the forces acting on a system is equal to its mass times its acceleration so we know that uh, F, uh, let's say, um, we're going to have now, K, so let me put it a little bit down on, on, this, on, on this side. So we're going to have now, what we're going to have is K, uh, X of T, Minus here also because it's negative is gonna be minus right minus k. Then uh, we're gonna have f v. Let's go there. F v d x t over d t. Plus F of T is equal to M. Ah, uh, this is going to be equal to M. D Square x of t, x of t, so you understand, and dt square. So once we have this one now, we are having our model in a time domain. Remember, the transfer function, it is in frequency domain. So we need now to find this one in frequency domain. We need to, to convert this one in frequency domain. So this is going to be now. When we apply the Laplace transform, this is going to be minus, minus k. The Laplace of this one will be x of s minus, this is a derivative. Mm. This is going to be the derivative of uh, this one is going to be f. V, then we're gonna have okay. F 
एस ओ सॉरी एस एक्स ऑफ एस प्लस प्लस एफ ऑफ एस Guys, give me a minute. You know, working at home is is always a problem. Give me a minute. I'll sort out this problem. Okay, guys, I'm back. Okay, so that's what I was I was showing you that this this gonna be, and uh, all these ones gonna be equal to. This is going to be equal to. Uh, let's go. Gonna be equal to mass. Gonna be uh, m. The the mass. S square x of s. So now, what we are trying to do now, we can now put all the f of s together. So we're gonna have this is gonna be we can have here we can have. Okay, let me just try to do it like this. Okay. Okay, we're gonna have m s square x of s plus k. Now let 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 put this the other one there. Gonna be better plus. Plus F V Ah, sorry for okay, plus. S X S plus no not plus this gonna be now I'll put it equal to is equal to F S so now. Uh, this is gonna be now. M S square plus F V S plus I forgot K here. Sorry, uh, sorry guys. Forgot to put K here. Okay. Add k plus k equal f s. So now this gonna be now. 
plus k and open the brackets x go to f s so now it become easy for us to find the transfer function here now so we can just easily write write writing here say g of s is equal to x of s over f s and this is going to be uh, um, i think it's one over one over one over Okay. One over M S square plus F V S plus K. So this is your transfer function of that mechanical system. So are we guys together or there is any question? Does, is there any question? Yes, no, or no. Okay. So uh, this is basically uh, what you did here. Okay, so this is what we did. I think this is our now. Okay, so still now uh, you can see say, here. Sorry. Say I was saying there's a question. I don't know. Say there's no question now. Okay. The question. What what the question? So you see on 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 the first step, so then uh, when you get the when you got the second step, that's where I got lost. So the second step where you got m s squared x s what what. What? Okay. This one where you got m s squared this x one. s plus f p s. Yes. This one. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. TV. Okay, uh, let's go back to this table here. Uh, okay. As I told you, we have the force the force displacement. You can see for the spring, the force displacement is giving us k uh, x of t. This one you understand, okay? Are we together? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. So from here, we write our 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 model following this this different force uh, force equation. Then. Okay, then what we have here now is this. Uh, okay, on this step here, we have this this equation. So you, this one, you get it right? Yes. Sir. Yeah, okay. Now what we did here just to apply the, the Laplace transform. So the Laplace transform of x of k, x of t is equal to k, x of s. And because this is a, the Laplace of the derivative, it's going to be s, x of s and this f of v is, is, is a um, just a coefficient so now same thing also on this one uh, this is the force f uh, sorry this one is f of t there i write uh, okay f of t so the the, the 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 laplace of this one is f of s and this one also because it's, it's Square. Well, well, when you check here, they say it's uh, second derivative. So that's why this one we have m s square. 
Okay. So now we 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 have the same thing here. What we did here, we got this one. Now, see, there is another way that we can represent uh, these things here by using the impedance rules. Remember, you see, I will present these forces here. So instead of you writing the model in a time domain, then starts now applying the Laplace transform. You can use the impedance. A rule to write straight these things in a, in a frequency domain. So what we know that the derivative of this one is x of s, and this one is s x of s, and for the forces like this. So you can write already your model. So this this gonna make things easy for you. Let's say we are here now. Uh, we have this. Okay, what what is it? Uh, okay. So let, let's write now the free body diagram. We have our free body. Guys, oh. give me a minute. So mm. we have our free body diagram there. Let's put it there. So this is M, and this is R, sorry. Let's put it straight in the right there. Okay. This is this one, and this is like that. And we have the force here, and we have our motion direction, x of t. We have f of t. We have k. Let me put it. Okay. So we have here we have K, we have K, uh, X of T, and there we're gonna have FV. The x of t over dt. So from here now, we can draw another free body diagram. Okay, so where we have m and we have also these forces, the same forces that we have on the other side. So now instead of writing uh, everything in frequency domain, you can write them in a in time domain because in frequency domain. You know that Laplace of s x of t is equal to x of s, and the force here will be f of s. This one gonna be k x of s, and this one gonna be f v. Fv, 
FFVS S X of S. So we know that for the mass, so this one also is going to be now easy for us. So, so using the impedance rule, so we know that the equivalence is just the way it is there. So we can write straight this one. We can write straight this one and saying, okay, um, using this free body diagram, we can say, okay, our force will be equal to minus K. Let's put this, this one right. K X S minus F V S S plus F S is equal to M M S square could be X. Okay, this is going to be now easy for us to use. It's going to be just um, you can write this one. M S square plus F V S plus K M plus K X S is equal to F. Okay, it's gonna be there. It's gonna be S there. So once you have this one, you can write your G of S, which is equal to one over M S square plus F V S plus K. So you can see now you can start writing. Uh, it's straight in um, in uh, unless if they ask you to write in time domain, or they just write to ask you to find the transfer function. This is the easy way you can write your your free free body diagram. Is there any question on here on this one? Okay, no question, eh? No questions. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. I think we have another problem here, which is the uh, this this was one degree of uh, freedom, so this is gonna be a two degree of freedom. So uh, it's already nine uh, past five past nine, so we won't have time to do this. We, we have another class in uh, I think in, in in four hours, right? At one we have class, so. We're gonna do this one then at uh, at one. Thank you very much. So this class is ending by by here. Let me meet around one. So for another. Sorry. Sorry. Papa, papa, papa. Yeah. Papa. Sorry, guys. What what did you say? Guys, what did you say? I, I, I cannot hear you. Papa. Okay, thank you very much. Papa, papa. Mm. Papa.